This is an industry that is coming roaring back right now. Gary Kelly talking about the fact that he's struggling to get the staff back as quickly as he wants. Is that a problem for you as well? It is indeed. Well, thanks for having me today. It is, uh, it is a busy time. You know, the last uh, uh, 15 or 16 months, it's been really challenging if you're in the travel and tourism industry. But we're, we're seeing a huge uptick in demand. We expect this summer to, to likely have the best leisure summer we've had in our 102-year history. Uh, business travel, uh, while it's still behind leisure, is starting to come back. Even group business is starting to come back. And hmm. really important day. I'm here high atop the, the Las Vegas Strip where we're going to open, as, as you guys suggested, 3,500 new rooms, the, the newest, best, most innovative rooms in Las Vegas. And so, yeah, the, the business is on the mend. And uh, particularly here in the U.S., the slope of the recovery is quite steep, much, frankly, much steeper than uh, than we thought it would be. And to Gary's point, certainly one of the biggest issues that we're having uh, having and, and are tackling and 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 getting resolved uh, ultimately because we have to is, is labor. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know, the the reality is things have recovered much more quickly than any of us would have expected, and it's been very difficult to get folks to come back to be able to serve uh, serve customers. So, Chris and so so, so what do you do about that? I mean, do you hire in a different pool? Do you have to raise wages? Do you do bonuses? What do you do? Well, it's a little, it's a little bit of all of that. I mean, it's a complicated issue, Alex, as, as I know has been reported on. But I think part of this is still here in the U.S. getting through the health issues, which we're rapidly doing with 70 percent um, of Americans having at least one shot. And I think an expectation that as we get to the fall, we'll get, you know, get to a fairly high level of herd immunity. So I think part of it is sort of getting a little bit further along with the health uh, issues. I think part of it is getting kids back in school in the fall because, you know, uh, a lot of families uh, don't have uh, child care. And so it's very hard to think about going back to work when you have no, no one to take care of your children. And then there is a degree to which as we, as we, you know, as an industry look out there, the unemployment insurance from the federal government that made so much sense a year ago is making less sense today. Because a year ago, we had no demand. There, there weren't as many jobs. Now, we have more jobs, more demand for jobs uh, than we have people that want them. And, and so unemployment insurance, um, which does expire in September, is, is definitely having an impact as well. When you put all the three of those things together, it makes for a challenging summer, you know? And so we are doing things, as you described, obviously paying higher wages, signing bonuses, um, and, and, and a number of other things. I do think, as you get into the fall, because of the things I just described, that a lot of the pressure is going to abate. And for Hilton, you know, a, a little plug for us, you know, we're three years running the number one great place to work in the United States, the number two great place to work in the world. So the ultimate solution is having a really great culture that attracts and retains the best team members in the industry. I'm proud to say that here in Las, Ve in Las Vegas, we haven't had that issue with our partners at Resorts World, they had 120,000 applications to fill a limited number of jobs here. So it has not been an issue uh, with this resort in Vegas, but labor, labor has well, been an issue in most parts of the country otherwise. Let's talk a little bit about the property you're in then and just kind of dwell on that a little bit further. Um, you, you've got a boring hole over to the convention centre. We do. Uh, the boring company has dug that. I'm wondering what, it, what it's like midweek, what the business kind of market looks like and what it is, is like at the weekend. You've already kind of highlighted the fact that leisure is super strong at the moment. When do you think business comes back properly? How it's, do you think business comes back? What does yeah, the convention is business look back. like longer term? Okay. First of all, first of all, in the boring hole, in an hour, I'm going to be in a Tesla in the boring hole going from Resorts World to the convention center. So it's, it's, uh, I haven't seen it yet. I, I've seen videos of it. It's absolutely spectacular. And I think it's going to be incredibly unique here in Las Vegas, and and just the location of resorts, the resorts world, which is directly across, not notwithstanding the the bore, uh, you know, the the boring underneath the road to connect it, it's right adjacent to the convention center. It's going to be great. But back to your question on business travel, group business, which the whole country depends on, and certainly you know our company and our industry depend on, and Las Vegas depends on, you know, particularly on the group side, it's coming back. So as I said, leisure, I would say right now is over. 19, 2019 levels. It's 100 plus percent, uh, both in occupancy and rate or rev par. Business travel is not, but it's come back a lot. I mean, it's probably still somewhere between, you know, 25 to 35 percent off, and group is probably about 50 percent off. But the slope of those recoveries 
uh, in both the business travel, so the week the weekday travel and the and the meetings and events business is is quite steep. And 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 I I would say I think through the summer you're going to continue to see those grind up. Mm -hmm. But my expectation is, and I feel you could see it in the data, you can see it in our booking data, which I'll talk about. When you get to the fall and you get many offices open around the country here in the U.S. and around the world and you get kids back in school, people are going to be traveling again for yeah. business at a much higher level and groups are going to be meeting. Yeah. And if you look at the data we have, like on advanced bookings, you know, for groups, which is which is very good data that goes mm -hmm. out to the second half of this year, goes out to 2022 and 23. The numbers are off the charts. So There's Chris huge, huge amounts of pent up demand. So, Chris, uh, last question here. So, uh, if you're looking at the fall for business travel to come back and you're feeling really bullish for the fall, how far behind is Europe? Six months, couple weeks, couple months? That's a great question. I, I would say probably just the, if I think about the cadence that we've been living through over the last six or 12 months, I would say it's one to two quarters behind. Is mm -hmm. it, you know, in my hope would be a quarter. Europe's recovering. Um, but there are many parts of Europe that, that are still, you know, in lockdown. Obviously, the U.K. extended mm -hmm. uh, some of their lockdown. And so until they get to a little bit better place uh, from a vaccination point of view and catch up with the U.S., I think it's going to it's going to be behind. But but it, it, even in the environment where they are still in various stages of lockdown, it, it is it is starting to recover at a decent pace. But I would suggest yeah. if we if I think when we get to like the, you know, you get into the second half of this year in the U.S., you're going to. You're gonna have a big rebound. You know, I think it. I think it's yeah. take a little longer. I think it'll be the end of this year, beginning of next year for Europe. 